My name is Sean Hill, and I'm the Community Director at Nice Job, proud sponsor of the Made Service Success Summit. Thank you so much for tuning into my talk. Last year, I was able to give a talk as well. I had so much fun getting a chance to connect with all of you, especially after the event. I was delighted to see my inbox filled with people dropping me some messages of what they liked about my talk, what they wanted to know more about, and really just to make some connections within our industries. So I invite you to do the same if you enjoyed the talk or if you have any questions, please send me an email, sean at nicejob.com. I'd be delighted to hear from you. Now into my talk here for 2021, I didn't want to just churn out the same old thing. I wanted to tell you the answer that you've been looking for, which is how many reviews do you actually need? And I promise I am going to give you an answer on that question. But first, it's important that you know about reputation marketing and why particularly you focusing on it is going to be huge for your business. So reputation marketing is the process of using your company's reputation to market your business to new leads. Reputation marketing is about acquiring and amplifying positive brand content to use your reputation as a promotional asset. Now, it's an emerging field. It combines elements of brand marketing and reputation management. And if it's done right, it'll increase your sales, it'll improve business metrics, it'll enhance your brand, it'll boost your revenue, and it will decrease some costs as well. It's going to help you hire new talent, retain them by giving them the recognition that they deserve, and ultimately put your business in a greater standing month over month, year over year. See, by marketing your positive reputation, you start to establish trust with customers before they even get into your sales funnel. You're going to ease their potential concerns by showing them trust signals, and that's pretty powerful stuff. So in this talk, I'm going to explain what is reputation marketing in depth, why it matters, and I'll even provide you some examples so that you can create a reputation marketing strategy for your business. So I alluded to it, and right off the top, let's talk about how exactly reputation marketing differs from some of the other fields that I've mentioned. So it's the strategy of using your brand assets in advertising and promotional materials, and this can include customer reviews, testimonials, online ratings, community awards, social media mentions, so much more falls under these assets that can become marketing gold. So by using your reviews and testimonials as part of your marketing, you're literally marketing your reputation itself. So whether you're including positive reviews, just an ad copy, or perhaps you're taking someone's review and sharing it on a different platform. So taking it from Google My Business and sharing it on a Twitter account. That is the example of reputation marketing at its simplest form. Now, how reputation marketing differs from brand marketing and reputation management is because you're using what others say about you to promote your company in a proactive sense. See, brand marketing is about publicizing your company's identity and values. Your brand is how you tell the world what your company stands for, but your reputation is what your company think your company stands for and how good a job they think you are living up to it. Your customers control your reputation. Believe it or not, as hard as it is for me to say, that is true. What they think your company stands for, how good a job they think you are doing, That's what ultimately makes up a big part of your reputation. And that's why the field of reputation management really started to take shape, especially as the digital age expanded and we saw more uh, interaction online. Reputation management became a necessary field. However, it started to get soiled with some bad practices. So reputation management involves managing your reputation by decreasing negative reviews and responding to online feedback and and resolving customer complaints online. But reputation marketing is more active than reputation management because not only are you responding to negative reviews and you're helping to have an online presence, but you're gathering a consistent stream of positive mentions. And you do that by making it easy for your customers to leave reviews and to give you feedback. Starting to make sense, isn't it? Now, we're seeing the biggest shift from reputation management to reputation marketing because it has a higher impact for businesses. Reputation management influences customer perception, not just by avoiding the bad, by embracing the good. Dealing with negative reviews is still very important, 
To effectively manage your reputation, it's helpful to respond to dissatisfied customers promptly and tactfully. In fact, at Nice Job, we have a blog that shows some negative review examples, but a general rule of thumb is listen to what they are saying in their negative review. Most negative reviews are the failure to meet expectations. Now, sometimes a customer may have unrealistic expectations. However, if earlier on in your process, you explained exactly how, what you were going to do, exactly what you were going to charge, and really had a great communication strategy, perhaps you could have weeded out that customer even before servicing them because you were not going to meet their expectations. And that's another way that reputation marketing can be more proactive. Because you're going to build a system that, where you are accepting all types of feedback, you need to ensure that every step of the way you have a great customer experience because you're going to be acquiring more mentions online and you're going to be marketing those mentions across your website, on social media, on review platforms. So the more you can set up that feedback to be positive, the more you'll be able to control your reputation in a way that doesn't get you into any trouble with search engines and review platforms. To kind of put it simply, the two main aspects that define reputation marketing are improving your reputation. So asking for reviews, gathering them, making sure the process is simple for a customer to leave a review. You could use reputation marketing software like Nice Job to do that, automatically collect your customer reviews. You can have a, system, a manual system in place as well. Either way, you want to constantly be looking to improve your reputation. And as it improves, you go to the second factor, which is marketing that reputation. You want to have a plethora of customer reviews, testimonials, and positive mentions so you can use that in various forms of your marketing. And that's pretty simple why it can have a strong impact on your business. You're no longer playing damage control when a business gets a negative review. You're able to clearly bury a negative review with a positive review, but also, if you start seeing more negative reviews roll in, you're able to determine what part of your system, what part of your business is contributing to those negative reviews and quickly solve and resolve that issue. And when it comes to online reputation, that's probably why you clicked on this to find out exactly how many reviews you need. It's your most powerful marketing tool. Consider these statistics about customer reviews and company reputation. 97% of customers say reviews impact their buying decisions, and 90% of customers think reviews are more important than anything else a salesperson would say. And on average, customers read about 10 reviews before buying, and they think their reviews are 12 times more credible than sales copy. Now, users online, as they go through reviews, are 74% more likely to contact a company with customer reviews especially if those reviews are on their website. If you don't display reviews on your website, chances are you're missing out on a good percentage of business just on that fact alone. In fact, having at least 10 customer reviews can increase your search traffic by 15 to 20%, but that's not the number you need just yet. And when it comes to reputation marketing and bringing your reviews into different assets, a recent study showed that advertisements with reviews and user-generated content just perform better. Click-through rates increased by 300%, and a cost per click and a cost per acquisition both decreased by up to 50%. You see, reviews, testimonials, user-generated content increase website traffic and contribute to your SEO. That's gonna help you generate leads and sales from having a slightly higher ranking, but reputation marketing also helps with leads and sales because that's social proof that's constantly present in all of your assets. Using those reviews in your ads and social media will improve those metrics and strengthen your bottom line. It's pretty much essential if you want your business to succeed. It's no longer enough to just manage your reputation, try to get rid of bad reviews, and minimizing just public damage caused by negative customer feedback. You have to get ahead of the game. Have your finger on the pulse of your reputation, actively get referrals, promote customer reviews and recommendations in your marketing, that is the core of what reputation marketing is and is exactly what you need to be doing. Before I tell you how many reviews you exactly need, let me tell you a little bit of why reviews are important. Besides all the elements of social proof we talked about, I touched on the fact that reviews are user-generated content. That's what search engines are looking for. They're looking to see that your website and your presence online 
is a viable and current answer to a question that is being posed. Oftentimes we get caught up in SEO tricks and keyword stacking and things of that nature. But ultimately customers have evolved to understand how things rank, even the most basic sense. They look for things like the Google Map 3 pack to find local businesses in their area. But sometimes based on what they see alone, they'll start to make psychological decisions to skew them one way or another. It could be if you appear in the Map 3 pack and then your website is underneath, besides looking at your review count, they want to see what your actual reviews are on your website, knowing that on the main Google search page, they can see your Google reviews. And with that Map 3 pack, up to 20% of that ranking alone comes from the amount of reviews you have, which is further weighted by how frequently you're getting new reviews, how often you reply to reviews, the depth and the text space of your reviews. And ultimately, if Google thinks that you are a current solution to a question that's being asked, the value of your reviews will exponentially help in your Google Map 3 pack. So what is that exact number? It's a bit hard to say, but let's start here. If you don't have at least 20 reviews, you really cannot consider yourself a competitor in your market. Even the smallest towns with very few competition, the 20 number stands out from a psychological standpoint as having enough experience to be trustworthy while having enough feedback come in to start to get a true sense. If you're familiar with the term uncanny valley when it comes to computer generated uh, graphics, then you will understand what it means for something that looks too real. So the uncanny valley is when they use CGI and they make someone look too real that's digitally created. Audiences from movies and TV shows have trouble really connecting and trusting. Well, the same concept can go to your reviews. Seeing someone with a 5.0 ranking and 200 reviews, studies have shown that they have just as much chance of booking that job as a 4.9 that has 150 reviews. However, it does start to skew when both of those numbers are out of whack. For example, having a 5.0 at 200 and a 4.9 at 17, statistically that 5.0 is booking more business. However, the more reviews you get, the more likely you are to build realness without having a 5.0. So how many reviews do you really need? 20 to get on the board, but you need as many as you can possibly get. Good ones and bad ones will help contribute to a realistic presence online. And once you get over that 20 threshold, it's then about starting to market the reputation that you're starting to earn, but ultimately continue to grow and expand. Oftentimes, we've discovered that customers might spend up to two weeks researching before making a decision. While a lot of industries require fast action, emergency services, things of that nature, and some of your businesses may fall within that category, ultimately, as they start to study and understand brands within their area, they will do multiple searches before making a decision. And that is why 20 gets you on the board, but is not a number that you can be happy with. So we now know that collecting reviews is important, right? We know about that user generated content and that by showing search engines like Google, that you are a viable and consistent answer to their question. Well, what process should you put in place to collect as many reviews as possible? Nice job does sell software that can help automate that process. However, I'm going to break down what nice job has done so that you can decide the system that works best for you. Nice job was designed to make it easy for a customer to leave a review. And that is the biggest point of contention for most consumers not leaving reviews. It's just too difficult. Think about all the times you've actually had a successful interaction with a business. How many times did you review them? Oftentimes, it might just slip your mind. It might not be something that you think of right away. Or you might have had so much fun out at a restaurant that the experience lasts so long that eventually you just kind of forget and you're just too tired to do so. 
So what nice job is designed to do is to send key messages at key times in order for your customers to leave your review. We would recommend using nice job or not to ask for a review at the moment of peak happiness. Oftentimes that is at the conclusion of service. However, you want to enhance that review request by perhaps if you're doing it through a digital platform, submitting a photo as well when asking for a review. If you're doing it in a physical sense, perhaps recapping the process and pointing out some key things you want them to remember can not only inspire them to leave a review, but also give them the exact details that they will put in the body of that review that will then become part of your marketing asset. By asking at the moment of peak happiness, you are also meeting them where they're most emotionally ready to leave the best review. However, there are still other key times to collect a review. Within two weeks, Nice Job sends a text message and up to three emails if necessary in order to reach out at different parts of the process to collect a review. Once a review is left, you don't get any more messages. If you're doing this without Nice Job software, we would recommend three days after the initial visit, reaching out to remind your client that they are able to leave a review through the simple process you put in place. Then at that point, it's up to you whether to follow up seven days after initial service, 10 days after initial service. But we find that two week period is the ultimate time to collect reviews. Now, it's not just about having a simple pathway for them to leave a review. It's also about preparing them to leave a five star review. Earlier on, I talked about bad reviews are mostly because of a failure to meet expectations. So to get a five star review, you have to prepare the customer from the very beginning. By them seeing reviews on your website, by seeing reviews prominently displayed in your marketing assets, they know that you are eager to hear feedback. That's the first step in preparing them to leave a five star review. Following up, call your shot. The second step would be to let them know that you are trying to give them a service that's worthy of a five star review. In fact, tell them that you're looking to do a service that's worthy of an eight or a 10 star review. And when you are developing perhaps sales packages or looking to price your sales offerings, your service offerings, excuse me, think of that in mind as well. What does five star service look like? What does eight star service look like? What does 10 star service look like? By doing that, you'll now know what you need to do to meet the expectation that you're about to set. So once you've called them in, corralled them in with your reputation marketing, your reviews displayed outward, and now you've called your shot at the very beginning, even before doing service, most important thing, you got to do a five star job. You have to follow up. You have to be communicating. You have to be friendly. You have to do everything you can to ensure that you've earned that five star review. Then at the end of the process, start getting a conversation and a dialogue started with them that gets them saying yes. Yes, it's a classic sales tactic. However, in this case, all you are doing is reminding them of the things that you did that you would like to see reflected in your review. That way you will more often than not end up with a review that has detail, that has context. Just getting five star review after five star review with nothing in the description will get you to that 20 review mark we talked about in order to be a competitor. It might get you to 100. It might get you to 200 and have you be the top rated in your area. But it's not really building more into your reputation. It's not telling a story of your brand and how you're actually executing on those values. So finally, after you've done the great work, and prior to that, you told them that you're gonna do great work, and prior to that, you showed other people that were saying that you do great work, they are sitting there admiring the work that you did. At this point, you want them to say yes by recapping. Well, I hope you enjoyed you know, how the, you know, this whole process went for you today. Uh, just wanna ask, you know, were you satisfied? Did you like, um, you know, how we intake, how, how we answer the phone, you know, how we did that? I just, just want to make sure at every step we were good here. Yeah, I, I did like that. The person was really friendly. Awesome. And, uh, you know, I know we're on time and things like that. Um, I want to know, were you, were you happy with the time frame? Um, you know, I know we were only 10 minutes early, but we, we try our best to be as early as possible. Yeah, you know, that, that was, you guys were great, you know, in and out pretty quickly. And, and it was awesome that you guys were here early. I didn't mind it at all. Awesome. 
you know, do you think that if you saw someone else's house look like this, that, that you enjoy it? You know, would you want to tell, uh, you know, your friends about us? Yeah, you know, this, this is great. I, certainly, this, this looks fantastic. Awesome. Would you be willing to leave us a customer review? And if they say yes at that point, that's when you want to follow up. Immediately tell them how. Immediately set the process in place for them to leave that review. As I mentioned, if you use Nice Jobs software, it can be an automated process. There's also a manual process within Nice Jobs umbrella. But you also can do things like QR codes, you know, review links. Um, you can also try to text them directly through, you know, a link code. You want to make sure that they can still leave it as easy as possible. Um, again, with Nice Job, the way we designed it was to have elements that would detect to make sure they can leave a review on these platforms. But ultimately, if you're doing those steps, you have set yourself up for the greatest opportunity to collect a review. And I'll get you that 20 mark and continue further. So now you're starting to collect reviews. You're starting to build some reputation. You're starting to build some assets. So how can you actually now use reputation marketing? Well, I want to give you four places that you can use reputation marketing, how you can promote your business and demonstrate the benefits of having a great reputation. First thing I would do is add the customer reviews to your website. I mentioned that a couple of times, but if you have a dedicated review page, that's a great example. So they could see all your reviews from Google and Facebook and, and all the other platforms. They can be automatically embedded on your website with widgets. Uh, another option that I would recommend is looking for some sort of promotion of real time reviews. Now, nice job has an engage widget, which is an example of this, which will display real time social proof right on your website. Um, but that subtle reminder of that real time social proof or the fact is that they're scrolling your website, learning about your business, learning about your services. They are subtly seeing virtual thumbs up and virtual nods of yes. Your company's great reputation is going to leave a great reputation on visitors. They're going to kind of feel more welcome. And having a dedicated review section, it's a surefire way to promote your positive reputation to visitors. And you've always heard about people going, well, I look for the three best and I look for the three worst reviews. Sometimes having a widget that's displaying all reviews and all your replies as well gives you an opportunity to show the full complement of your business. But your first review would probably be best served right on that front page. You know, a recent study showed that just adding a review underneath your hero section improved the conversion rate by 56.2%. Yes, over 50% improved conversion rate by having a review right there on the homepage. Now, the second example is I talked about using all those reviews in your advertisements. So whether it's Google Ads or you're promoting on Facebook or Instagram, Leveraging your reputation helps improve your paid marketing performance. Now, this is especially pertinent since Google retired manual review extensions from Google Ads, for instance. This means finding diverse ways to reference reviews and ratings to drive results is more important than ever. Now, say in Facebook, you want to do a sponsored post and you have a review right in there. It's so engaging and so effective, and it starts to generate some social media buzz about your company while providing convenient calls to action as well. So that way, you're enticing them with the review, you're giving them the feeling you want, and you're immediately giving them the ability to act on it. Now, paid posts on other platforms are great because they show potential customer success stories to your upcoming clients. Now, your leads are going to probably be more likely to trust your business and will feel more comfortable hiring you and exploring you even more because they're seeing the success stories first. Now for Google Ads, there's also an automated extension called Seller Ratings that can increase your advertisements click-through rate by 10%. That means it'll show your average review score and how many reviews your company has right in the advertisement. But they're automated, so the best way to improve odds of leads seeing them is to get positive customer reviews on those trusted sources like Google My Business. You could also do a local service ad, which will show review rating and the number of reviews that your business has. Local services ad do work on a pay per lead model, so there's no way to really outbid competitors for clicks. So that means your reviews and your average star rating are gonna end up being the two most impactful criteria for ad placements. Because if you're side by side in a local service ad, you need to stand out and be particular. And that is why the amount of reviews combined with your overall rating comes to play. Back to the example. The 5.0 can be beaten by a 4.9, even a 4.8, by things of the quality number of reviews and the in-depth detail within those reviews. 
it really underscores how important that building a reputation is with customer reviews because more often than not, that is a deciding factor between businesses. And I mentioned about paid advertisements, but you can also use your free social media accounts to promote your reviews. And it's a very powerful way to do so. If you share your customer reviews and positive reputation content right in your social media post, you're taking someone doing a natural scroll and starting to present your brand to them. You don't have to buy ads just to share reviews. You can craft posts through software such as Nice Job that'll help you automatically share those reviews. You can use tools like Canva to take those copies and create great social media assets. Lumen5 is another great free tool out there to create great content for your social media. And especially maid services and home service businesses can take advantage by using photos of the work combined with the review copy to create truly engaging content. Now, other examples that you can use on social media are by sharing some accolades that may have come to your business. Stuff like community impact awards for community service, or perhaps your involvement in local charities and local community events. This kind of marketing material is just as useful as a customer review because it demonstrates your company's ability to be reliable and trustworthy without having to ask your audience just to take their word for it. Reputation marketing is all about showing, not telling. And it can do wonders for your business the more you show on these free platforms. Now, I've talked a lot about getting customer reviews, but one thing in particular I wanna make sure is you've already gone and claimed your review platforms, correct? Like your Google My Business, you already have a profile there. If you're not claiming it, controlling it, and connecting your review pipeline to it, you're leaving a huge opportunity on the table. Having a Facebook page as well will really help you show that you are present, but not only that, will it give you another platform for you to share reviews you might be getting on other platforms. Finally, you want to use your reputation in various different ways and in various different forms. Finding widgets like trust badges or story badges that allow new reviews to show or your overall rating across all review platforms will help you start to dominate your region. You know, reputation marketing is an important strategy for any business if you want to take your company to the next level and you want to dominate your market, right? But doing that in a consistent manner does take some work and it takes a little bit of skill as well. So to answer the overwhelming question, how many reviews do you need to actually succeed? The answer is about 10% for the amount of work that you are doing. Yeah, one out of every 10 will start to do the trick. By consistently doing that and having that as your minimum, you will start to collect enough collateral and enough result. Now you may have said to yourself, well, if I have 10 jobs per month and I'm getting one out of those 10, as you said, it's gonna take me 20 months to get to that competitor status. Well, that's why it's the bare minimum. Ultimately, as your reputation starts to grow, you're gonna get more than 10 jobs a month. And you're gonna have the ability to up that conversion rate by using software such as Nice Job to make it a bit easier to collect reviews. But additionally, you're gonna to start to build core values into your business. So the amount of reviews you need is one out of every 10, 20 to get on the board, but actually the final answer is as many as you possibly can. If you'd like help collecting reviews, Nice Job Software can help you get two to three times more reviews, but also our blog, our podcast, and even events like here, the Made Service Success Summit, will help you gather what you need to build a culture that is worthy of a great reputation. I wanna thank you all for tuning in to my talk today. I hope you had as much fun as I did, and I cannot wait for you to go crush the review game and start collecting more leads, more sales, while growing your reputation and dominating your area. Once again, I am Sean Hill, the Community Director from Nice Job. You can visit NiceJob at get.nicejob.com, and you can drop me an email at sean at nicejob.com. Have a great rest of the summit, a great rest of the day, and don't forget to have a little fun out there as well.